20, 30, 36. That's lovely. Thank you. Thanks. Bye now. Bye. <coughs> Okay, don't worry about it. Um, do you want to go through to see Dr. Cassidy right now? Mm -hmm. I should get danger money working here. I'm going to stink like a sick basin all day now. Uh, well, there must be some kind of stomach bug going around. They were queuing out the door when I arrived. Oof. I mean, I burnt the toast this morning. I've stubbed my toe. What's next? Being kicked in the teeth by a donkey. Well, they say bad luck comes in three. So. You are due a change of fortune. We'll see, shall we? Ooh! Fancy envelope, posh writing, dinner invitation from the Queen. Mm, I should be so lucky. Oi, fat controller! You can't keep me here, you know. I'm a European human. I've got rights. Which is why I'm waiting for your dad to try and get away from work so the three of us can have a nice little chat. When do I get a PlayStation, like in a proper prison? Let's see how smart that mouth of yours is when your dad arrives. Tell him to bring my DS, yeah? The next time you get the urge to send one of my stories into a magazine, don't. Mom, you've been shortlisted. You should be happy. Writing's your dream, isn't it? No, that's why I gave it up. Um, well, you didn't tell me. There is a reason why I didn't want the whole world reading that story. Did the plot not seem vaguely familiar to you? Mm, not really, but I only skimmed it. <sighs> anyway, anyway, they, they want to send some journalist to, to interview me, that's got to be called off for a start. Right about that, yeah. Um, she's already been round and I've sent her to you. What? You have a visitor in reception, Mrs. Holmes. Good luck. Mr. Kelly, Rob Holmes, thanks for coming. How's Felix? A little mouthy for my liking, but other than that, he's fine. I'm cheeky, I can cope with. Getting caught with stolen goods is another matter. You did say he'd been caught with stolen goods. Well, Felix managed to dump the stuff before I got to him. Well, there's uh, CCTV. And you saw him take them? I saw him running away, and I've got a very reliable source that says that he did steal them. So you've absolutely no evidence that Felix has done anything wrong, yet you're still holding him? Yeah, yeah, I am, because I know how easy it is for good lads to get into trouble, so I'll bring them in. Give him a bit of a scare, and that usually does the trick. And there is the small point of Felix being absent from school. Franklin and Ketley solicitors. Mm -hmm. I imagine you've heard of us. If not, you'll be hearing from us soon. Badge number. I think that says 7244. Mm. Time for you to run along and get my son, Sergeant Hollins. Try not to give me any more ammunition for my formal complaint while you do. that you had to come all the way down here. Nonsense. I was actually glad when your daughter suggested it. The whole point of the competition is to showcase the talents of ordinary people. And what could be more ordinary than working here? No, I, did, I, I meant I'm sorry you had to come down here because I don't think I can do the interview. You're bound to be nervous, but I'll be gentle. No. <laughs> it's not that. It's, um, well, it's a story. Um, 
I wrote it ages ago for a course. I didn't actually send it in. But a family member saw how talented you are and did it for you. My lovely daughter. Talented? Of course. Yours is my favourite story in the competition. That's just between us. You know, I've got so much respect for you, Karen. Wife and mother, juggling a career. How do you find the time to be creative on top of all that? Well, <laughs> it can be tricky. You know, you should give your daughter a big pat on the back. Last year's competition winner went on to get a book deal, you know. Now, this could really open some doors. Like the claim victims. Uh, uh, just as we said, a few home. More arrive. It is like trying to bail out the Titanic with a thimble. What's this? Well, after her mysterious letter this morning, Mrs. Hollins had a visitor. Jackie Welsh, Leatherbridge Life? Now, you know I do not like to pry into other people's personal business, but I did a little research. Short story competition. They have posted the stories online for the public to vote for their favourite. Why has she been so secretive about it? Stick one down for Karen to win for me. I most certainly will not. If you want to rig the election, you can look elsewhere. It's just a competition in a local mark, Mrs Tembe. The rules clearly state, you read the story and then you vote. If you cannot spare five minutes for democracy, then. for 14 hours a day, six days a week, and a half day on Sunday. My feet hurt. I have to wear gloves all year round. You've still got no right to touch me. Everything you steal means there is less food on my family's table. So yes, I have a right. I have every right to do with you whatever I choose. Get down! No! <sighs> So we'll have a chat first of all, which I'll record and write up. And then later on, we'll do a brief interview on camera for the online edition. Sound good? <laughs> yeah, I've never done anything like this before. For now, all you need to do is tell me and the readers why they should vote for your story to win. Oh, OK. <laughs> Just relax and be yourself. Well, you must do this all the time. I mean, I'm normally elbow deep in urine samples and stroppy patients. Yeah, this kind of thing is my bread and butter. Though I am aiming for a cover line by the time I've turned 40. <laughs> but if I didn't do this job, I wouldn't get to meet people like you, would I? So, sell me your story, Karen. Well, it's sort of a love story. It's about um, a woman who thinks that she's met the man of her dreams and then it turns out that he's leading a double life. Then it becomes all about her struggling to deal with the death of her lover and the aftermath of his betrayal. See, he was, um, he was a drug addict and dealer, you see, and she never knew. <sighs> Mrs Crooks was the last for the time being, and the latex gloves have finally arrived. That's clear. Is everything all right? I didn't know who to call. You've done the right thing, Mr. Khan. What happened? He tried to kill me, the psycho. No, I, I was nowhere near him. I didn't touch him, please. That's okay. Just calm down. Right, let's have a look. <clears throat> Doesn't look too bad, but it might need a few stitches. You should be banged up. Do you know what they do to people who hurt kids in prison? All right, all right. Nothing wrong with your tongue, is there? Okay, let's get you to hospital. Although I don't think it's life threatening. But, Sergeant, just leave it with me, okay? Enough. How can I put this, Karen? There's a lot of magazines out there. You have to grab people's attention. Are you sure there isn't an angle we could play here? An angle? A story behind the story. Like if you kept your writing ambitions a secret from your family all these years. Well, like I said, I just did this course. Or if it was your mother's dying wish that you put pen to paper. Cherry! 
You're having fun chatting about that story of yours. How about I give you two a minute? Don't you have anything better to do? You could try being grateful for the lift home. You know, I've known Mr Khan for quite a while now. Yeah, go to the same branch of old Gits Anonymous, do you? And he's not the kind of fellow who goes around hurting kids. So what did really happen in there, Felix? How are you? You feeling OK? It's a bit of a knock, he's OK. I was talking to my son. He's fine. And I hope you don't mind that he let me in, seeing as you weren't here. I was in a meeting. I came as soon as I could. What happened? That shopkeeper's got it in for me. He pushed me and I hit my head. Upstairs, Felix, now. Well, I hope whoever treated him took photos. Before you start jumping to conclusions, you might want to ask what Felix was doing in the shop in the first place. I couldn't care less what he was doing in the shop. <laughs> Seems to be a running theme with you, doesn't it? Not caring less. Maybe I'd get more luck if I spoke to his mother. His mother's not in the picture anymore. Not that it's any of your business. Well, it is my business when your son's out stealing from members of the public. Allegedly. I think you meant to say... As you well know, no one, and that does include your son, is above the law. I couldn't agree more. Karen, how could you do this to me? You know how much things with Scott affected me. I didn't mean for this to happen. So why put it on the internet for the whole world to read? It, it, because it, 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 I wrote it for that course, and Immy sent it in. And don't blame Imogen, you're the one that wrote it. I know that, but it, it was just an exercise that the tutor said for us to, to make sense of things that happen to someone you care about. I was mortified when I found out it was online. Really, it must have brought up some horrible memories for you. I'm so sorry. OK, well, let's just put it behind us. Oh, thank you. And thank you. I know that it would have been a big opportunity for you. Would I have? Yeah, a minute ago, you were just talking about my horrible memories. Yeah, but nobody's going to know it's you. I'll know! Fine, that's the way it's going to be. Ambition first, friendship second, fine. But I really hope that it's worth it. I'm afraid I need to ask you to come down the station, Mr. Carl. Now, you've not been arrested, but an allegation's been made that you assaulted Felix Kettley in your shop this afternoon. So I need to ask you some questions. You might want a solicitor present. Have you heard what I've said, Mr. Carl? It's just an investigation. You haven't been charged with anything. Every day. Boys and girls stealing, taking anything they can. And I cannot afford CCTV, so I try to tell myself it's all part of running a business, but it wears a man down. Calling the police every day, seeing a boy like that arrested and then set free an hour later. Yeah, it must be hard. I came in from the back room to find him trying to open the till. I chased him. I caught him. I tried to explain my side of the story, that's all. Then you've got nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. Explain to me, please, why it is there are no consequences for people who steal from me, yet I do nothing wrong and I end up here. I had to tell my wife. It would be another six months till I could bring her and our son to join me here because business wasn't so good. Harry, now I have to tell her I am being accused of assaulting a child. Everything all right? Fine. Should we crack on with the video interview? Online content is so important these days. OK, um, but not here. I'm going to find somewhere else. I didn't mean for this to happen. 
So I put it on the internet for the whole world to read. Because it, it, I wrote it for that course, and Immy sent it in. Felix was trying to steal from the till. That's why Mr. Khan was chasing him, if you're interested. And you have evidence to support that theory, I suppose? No, I thought not. And he says that Felix slipped and fell over on his own. <laughs> Why don't you drop the assault allegation? There's no witnesses. It's Felix's word against his. Why would Felix steal? Anything he wants, he only has to ask for. Yeah. I see a lot of divorced parents trying to buy the loyalty of their kids instead of teaching them the value of money. I'm not divorced. I'm widowed. Typical police attitude. Always assuming you know more than you do. Kelly. Wendy Kelly. She was forced off the road. Not that you lot bothered to look for the other vehicle. I'm sorry. What are you doing here? Are you okay, Felix? I thought the hospital checked him over. You all right, son? What? Have you been drinking? No! He's been drinking. Is that what happened earlier? Why you fell over? I can handle this. Felix! 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 Ready? Maybe we could do this later. You could meet me at home after my shift. No, this is perfect. Interviewing you in the place where you slaved away waiting for your big break. Maybe you could talk a bit about what inspired the story. Nothing inspired me. It's, it's fiction. I made it up. It's, it's fiction. <laughs> Karen, are you OK? I think maybe I'll nip to the loo before we start. What are you doing, Mr. Khan? I dropped my keys. Oh. Felix, have you? He's been drinking alcohol. Drinking? But he's just a boy. Yeah. I found out that his mother 
died tragically. I think that might have something to do with it. I was kind of hoping that he'd be here having a pop at you. <laughs> For once, no. I'm locked out. Oh. Right, well, let's see what we can do. How did he get in there? I don't know. He's always doing it. Mr Kelly, yeah, it's Sergeant Hollins. Can you make your way down to the Khan convenience store on Avery Street? We found Felix. Boy! Open the door now! There's liquor all over the floor in there. And he has a lighter. Felix, listen to me. It's Sergeant Hollins. Stop messing with that lighter now and get out here. Anyone comes in... I'll torch the place. I'm gonna have to break in. No, no, please let me try. Felix, listen to me. I have a son. He lives in Pakistan with my wife. It's been six years since I've seen him and I know it's not the same as what you're going through, Felix, but some days, some days, I wonder if my son feels like I've abandoned him. That I don't love him because he cannot see me. Because I'm nowhere near. But the truth is, I think about him every day. He's always in my heart. Your mother wouldn't want this for you, Felix. Put the lighter down. Put it down. I'm too far out of control. Need the fire service urgently on Avery Street. This is Jackie Welsh, and I'm here today with Karen Hollins, who was shortlisted for our short story competition. Maybe you could start, Karen, by telling us a little about what made you want to be a writer. Um, well, I just fancied it, really. I'm not very good at it. You're a natural talent, Karen. More like a gobby little madam, which is what my mum used to call me. But this story isn't entirely fiction, is it, Karen? Can you tell us a bit about that? I'm sorry? You're unbelievable. Oh, Cherry! <laughs> you did take some inspiration from real life, didn't you? A little more than just inspiration, some might say. Isn't everything in the story true, Karen? Didn't it happen to a colleague of yours? And didn't you use her life story without even asking permission? Can you answer the question, Karen? <sighs> I've been a right mug, haven't I? Karen, I'm trying to help you out here. People like to know the story behind the story, remember? Oh, so you're not trying to make yourself look good, creating a splash so you can get yourself on the front page? I haven't created anything, nor as it turns out of you. You've been blowing smoke up my backside all day. Well, if you don't take that story off your website, I will sue the pants off you. <coughs> it's a bit of a mess in there. It needed a lick of paint anyway. Where's Felix? Dad! Oh. I'm sorry. <sighs> you have nothing to be sorry for. Thank you. I should have noticed there was something wrong with him. Could have been a lot worse. I know, but uh, we'll be fine now. Won't we? I'm going to have to inform social services, I'm afraid. But don't worry, they're not the enemy. They want the same as the rest of us. We want to keep Felix out of trouble. And as you well know, it's up to Mr Khan whether or not he presses charges, but I will be following up on the criminal damage. Yeah, of course, I, I understand. There's somebody you need to meet. Mr. Khan. I am so sorry. I'll, I'll cover the cost of whatever damages my son has caused you. I have a family too. I know it's not easy. Thank you. I will burn every copy. I will erase my hard drive. I'll never mention that flipping story ever again. Just tell me that you told that woman where to shove. Oh, don't you worry. 
You do know you've thrown away your best opportunity to make something of yourself. <laughs> do you know what? I'd rather be ordinary and happy than clawing my way to the top and miserable like you. Some people just don't cut out for success. Oh! oh. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Hold the front page. Oh. <laughs> You're a very clever boy. Hello. Would you like a tissue? Would you? Oh, dearie, dearie me. I'll be having a little chat with each of you. By the end of the day, I'll let you know who's got the role. Can't you see how unhappy I am? Yes, love, but you're going to have to find another friend to lie for you. Why not take the next logical step and become a partner? All right, so that's what this was about. I get jealous of my friends, too. Sometimes it kills me, but I've never doubted us. I can finally reveal that the winner is... After losing...